welcome to Coaching for Creatives with Kirsten. My name is Kirsten Call. I'm a therapist trained life coach and a children's book author. Together, we'll get the drama out of our lives and onto the page. Let's get started. You are listening to episode 69, When You Have ADHD. I am currently taking a 25-hour course on ADHD for my professional licensure. I love that we need continuing education in order to keep our licenses because then I have an excuse to take any class I want on any topic related to therapy, of course. This class has been fascinating. As a person with many ADHD tendencies, I am raising five kids with ADHD and I'm married to a man with ADHD-ish characteristics. Since my husband and I have not been officially diagnosed, I'm not going to presume that we have actual ADHD, (laughs) but there is a spectrum of characteristics and everyone in my family fits on the ADHD spectrum somewhere. Thus, my choice of studies this year. It helps me, my family, and my clients. Most ADHD people are extremely creative. It's just correlation, not causation. There are plenty of people without ADHD who are creative. Yet many, many creatives do have ADHD or ADHD tendencies. And I actually had several people request an episode on ADHD within two days of each other. That happening when I'm in the middle of this super informative and super long yet engaging CU class seemed serendipitous. ADHD is one of those things that may feel like a weakness. Go back to last week's episode and listen to Embracing Your Strengths if you haven't already. Anyway, ADHD may feel like a weakness, but on the flip side, there are so many strengths associated with ADHD. I believe ADHD gives us creative superpowers. So I'm going to talk about some things you may struggle with as an ADHD creative and some tips and tricks for transforming those perceived weaknesses into strengths that really help you. Number one, working on many projects, even many types of projects at once. There are so many right ways to write. See what I did there? (laughs) Some people stick to one project only until they finish it, and then they start a new one. Others with ADHD tendencies might start many projects and work on them at different times depending on how they feel. I personally love working on different projects at different times. I always have board books, picture books, at least one novel and verse, and many ideas I'm percolating on all at the same time. This keeps my writing work fresh and exciting and fun for me and hopefully my readers as well. So if you are the kind of person who doesn't stick to just one project, take heart. It's totally normal and natural to want to do many things at once. There's nothing wrong with it. And in fact, it may lead to more ideas and more creativity. It's one of those camouflaged strengths. Number two, unfinished projects or manuscripts. I know many people who are frustrated by their lack of follow through, at least that's what they call it. They start projects and don't finish them and then they start other projects. This is definitely related to number one, working on many projects. I think our logical minds want to think about projects and deadlines in a linear way, like we have to force ourselves to work on one project until it is done, and then we will allow ourselves to work on the next one. This approach works for some people, and that's great. And. It doesn't work for a majority of creatives. I love throwing out the linear way of thinking about this and thinking about it in a more lateral way. This approach is based on discovery and exploration, which is very much a strength of those with ADHD. People with ADHD make connections between two unrelated things beautifully. So stop judging yourself for working on something else when you feel stuck on one project. Sometimes working on the other project is just what you need to get your juices flowing for the last project. But what about deadlines, you ask? That leads us to number three. Number three is procrastination. If you have ADHD, you may procrastinate. It might be because you forget to do something or you don't know how to start or your time management isn't the best or you don't actually want to do the thing you're trying to get done. People with ADHD do really well under the pressure of a deadline. There's something about knowing you only have a short period of time to do something that lights a fire under people. ADHD people can start late and yet do a fabulous job. What a beautiful ability. It's all about hyper-focus, which leads me to number four. Number four, focus. 
Usually we think of ADHD as an arbiter of a lack of focus. It's literally in the name, attention deficit. And it's true. People with ADHD have a hard time focusing on things they don't want to focus on. But sometimes distraction leads to making new connections. And when you have ADHD and you're interested, you have this ability to hyper-focus. As a kid, I would hyper-focus on reading. I could be in the noisiest room with people calling my name, and I wouldn't notice or even hear anything else because I was so hyper-focused on my book. Hyper-focus is a proven superpower for people with ADHD. When you are passionate about something, nothing will stop you from doing it and doing it well and doing it all the time. This is an incredible strength. Number five, emotional sensitivity. People with ADHD tend to feel things more deeply than those without it. And therefore, they may be more emotionally reactive than other people. This emotional sensitivity might feel like a weakness. As a parent of ADHD kids, it's definitely challenging to figure out how to navigate all the big feelings. And people with big feelings are the people who show more empathy, more compassion, and more understanding for other people. Emotional sensitivity and emotional experiences gives creative depth for creating stories and art and original ideas. So when you're feeling the big feelings, don't judge. Just allow yourself to feel those feelings and process through them. They make you the kind of person we all want to be around. Number six, impulsivity. Although impulsivity can cause problems, believe me, I have the kid who emptied all the soap dispensers in first grade and pulled the fire alarm just to see what would happen. <laughs> so impulsivity can cause problems, but studies show that impulsivity leads to more creative ideas. And a study of people with ADHD showed that people with ADHD prefer coming up with new ideas, while other people prefer developing old ideas. Also, impulsivity is related to risk-taking, and working in the arts professionally, it's risky. Let's be honest. We have to be really brave to put our creative endeavors out into the world. Number seven, time management. Time blindness is a real thing for people with ADHD. Sometimes it's hard to make it to appointments on time or to keep to a schedule. I found alarms on the phone to be really helpful for our family. If we are alerted to the time, we are more likely to get moving. Also, choosing the amount of time we are going to spend on things is really helpful. Timers in general work well. If I set a timer for five minutes and say, okay, we're all going to clean up as fast as we can for five minutes, it feels doable. It feels fun. And we get it done. Number eight, forgetting little things. Forgetting things is annoying and can be super inconvenient too, especially if you forget to take medication or you forget where you put your phone or wallet or keys. Forgetting the little things is frustrating, but it's also not the worst thing ever. It's okay to forget things sometimes. It's also okay to lose things sometimes. It's part of being human. Every human, whether they have ADHD or not, forgets things. So don't judge yourself. And also, there are specific things you can do to prevent forgetting the little things. If you have a specific place you put the wallet or keys, every time you enter the house, you'll be more likely to put them there and less likely to lose them. If you have an alarm on your phone to remind you to take your medication, you're more likely to take it. Although sometimes the alarm goes off and you've forgotten what it's for. <laughs> sometimes a pillbox is a good way to remember to take your vitamins and medicine. If you forget people's names as soon as they introduce themselves, be intentional and try to think of something that will help you remember. Perhaps link their name with a visual image in your mind. Repeat their name after they say it to you. Link the new name with something or someone you already know. For example, I just met someone named Lydia, and since I have a niece named Lydia, it was really easy to remember her name. Also, pay attention to what you do remember. You might learn something about who you are and what your particular brain finds important. I almost always forget facts and figures, but I don't ever forget a face or someone I've had a conversation with and connected with. For me, facts and figures are kind of irrelevant, but relationships, <laughs> they matter. Number nine, curiosity. Every person I know with ADHD is highly curious. Many parents will talk about their ADHD kids and their insatiable need for knowledge and how they always ask question after question after question. This could get annoying for other people, but curiosity is why ADHD gives you the ability to come up with new ideas and create original works of art and stories. So when you're curious, lean into it. Ask the questions. Embrace curiosity instead of fear. Even if you were told over and over again as a kid that the answers to your questions were not important, the answers are important, if only for the sake of learning. 
Curiosity is a healthy way to approach almost every interaction you have. When someone is grumpy, be curious. Wonder why she reacted that way. When you make space for curiosity and embrace your curiosity, you feel more alive and connected with others and the world you live in. If this podcast was helpful and you think you might have ADHD or you know you have ADHD, here are a few more resources. Last week, a new book just came out, and it is such a great book. It's called ADHD is Awesome, A Guide to Mostly Thriving with ADHD by Penn and Kim Holderness. Uh, It's an engaging and fun book for anyone who has ADHD or lives with someone with ADHD. There's also a really good podcast called ADHD Aha, where people talk about when they discovered they had ADHD and how it felt. There are a couple of phenomenal websites, CHAD, which is Children and Adults with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. That's one of them. It's an organization that provides education, advocacy, and support for people with ADHD and their families. And then Attitude, it's (laughs) ADD-itude. It's got a bunch of top ADHD resources also. So if you have ADHD, you are neuroatypical and... That's wonderful. It helps you think outside the box in a really creative way. You are an original and everything you create is original. Your brain is beautiful. Embrace your ADHD superpowers and anything is possible. Until next time, keep smiling. If you like what you've heard, check out my Get Yourself Unstuck program. Go to kirstencall.com. That's K I R S T I N E C A L L.com and schedule a free consultation today. Coaching for Creatives is produced by Kirsten Call. Music and audio engineering by James Call.